I see it says the session is being recorded down on the bottom. Good. Okay. So my name is Erin Middle, and I'm chair of the Sierra Club Atlantic Chapter. And I want to welcome you to tonight's webinar sponsored by the Atlantic Chapter on how to submit comments on the DEC's proposed amendment to part uh, to six New York CRR Part 380 related to the prevention and control of environmental pollution by radioactive materials. The Atlantic Chapter represents the Sierra Club in New York State, and the club is one of the oldest environmental organizations in the country. Here in New York State, we have more than 50,000 members and have worked on a variety of issues to protect our water, air, and land, and public health in the state. Just a few logistics. If you do have questions throughout the presentation, you can type them into the chat on the right, and we can try to incorporate answers into the presentation. Uh, we will also, um, we must end the webinar promptly at 7.55, and then if there's interest, we can continue the conversation um, by conference call, and we'll share that call number at the end. And if you're interested in moving to the conference call at the end, make sure to download the PDF file of the presentation if you want to refer to it during the conference call. Um, and we also have some additional handouts, a fact sheet from Damascus Citizens on this issue, and a draft letter that you can use in uh, developing your own comments. So now I want to introduce our presenters, who I'm so pleased to have join us. Fred Sinclair is president of Concerned Citizens of Allegheny County, which works to protect against radioactive waste. Entering Allegheny County and informs the public about threats to material resources and our quality of, uh, sorry, natural resources and our quality of life. And also joining us tonight is Rachel Treichler, who is a lawyer and also serves many roles in the Sierra Club, including as a member of the Atlantic Chapter's Gas Task Force, and has worked so hard on behalf of the Sierra Club to protect the environment and public health, and as a leader and activist in so many other organizations. So thank you, Fred and Rachel. I'm so excited and pleased to have you joining us tonight. And with that, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, uh, and Sierra Club, for the venue. And uh, it's really a privilege to be here with you and uh, with you, Rachel, um, collaborating on presenting this information. As you know, um, environmental in activists and, and groups all across New York State and the nation have for uh, decades uh, resisted the impact of hydrofracking and proliferation of fossil fuels in New York State, and in particular the, um, the impact of the hazardous wastes from Marcellus Shale drilling in Pennsylvania. Um, the wastes from that operation uh, started being imported into New York State for disposal in our sanitary landfills, um, oh, I would say seven or eight years ago. It really um, began in, uh, in large quantities, although it's probably been 10 years that they've been bringing in those wastes. And it was during our uh, resistance to those wastes, uh, that waste stream coming in, and looking at the whole hydrofracking um, uh, issue uh, prior to the ban in New York State, that we learned about the uh, the hazardous materials and the hazardous nature of the waste stream, and uh, we learned a lot about the the generation of uh, uh, Marcellus and Utica um, and gas resources, and uh, it was during that that we learned about. Uh, the radioactive nature of the Marcellus, uh, or the black shales, we'll call them. And um, they were laid down 350 million years ago. And uh, during that time period, the oceans were extremely radioactive, um, five, six times the, um, the levels that uh, we experience now. And those salts uh, deposited into the over 100 million years, those salts deposited into the decaying uh, organic materials and the sediments that were settling, and they formed those layers. And that radioactivity is uranium-based, 
and it, it's still active to these days. When they pull the gas out of it, it um, it carries with it radium, and uh, which is a daughter of uranium, and um, the resulting um, radon is of concern in the actual gas. This is part of what we'll be discussing tonight, um, as well as a broader range of um, concerns about the regulations that are being proposed um, that have been presented by uh, citizens for the Citizens Environmental Coalition has also contributed to the, um, the content in the presentation. And so that's pretty much um, where we're going to go with this. Um, the oil and gas industry has um, been granted many exemptions from regulation of the waste stream and uh, pertaining to the characterization of it. And the tendency, in, in, in my opinion, um, or from our viewpoint, the tendency has been to ignore the environmental impacts during transmission and use of Marcellus gas. Um, and that's evident um, throughout this proposed changes and proposed reorganization of the amendments. And those are the things that we're going to be pointing out and talking about. Um, radioactivity is only one of the many pollutants that um, are present in this new style or this new source of gas. The volatile organics and, and the, um, the other um, potentially uh, uh, harmful components such as arsenic and other minerals um, are of concern. However, tonight we're just going to be staying with the issue of radioactivity because that is the indeed the um, the area of regulation that we're dealing with or that is open for comment. So with that, uh, I think we'll go to the second page. Aaron, if you would bring us to the second page. All right. Now, uh, hopefully many of you are familiar with the comment um, process, but you have to have written comments and they can be submitted via email or you can mail them in. Mailing them in um, physically to DEC assures it getting there and assures it getting opened. And your personal comments are very important because they don't get grouped into um, piles as much as uh, they get considered individually. So. However you develop a comment, um, you can email it in, as you see here, to regsradiation at dec.ny.gov, or you can mail it to the address above that. Okay. Now we have um, the, the also at the bottom of that slide, we have the proposed amendments and where they're posted and that is the full information page that DEC has provided. So if you um, want to get the whole shot of, um, of the regulations and the, the uh, links to all of the information, you hit that one and that will take you or type it into your computer. And that will take you to the, the whole background base of information. So there's that, um, that slide. Next slide, please. Now, we have developed talking points and some CAN letters that have been distributed um, and that are uh, included at the end of this, but we're, we've prepared a summary of those talking points. And the first most glaring um, thing that we've noticed is that DEC has not done a full environmental review of the potential impacts of the materials that they are regulating. Now, specifically, if we go with the um, oil and gas um, drilling race, the wastes, uh, we look at the fact, then number two there, that the uh, regulations must cover the drilling wastes that contain radium-226 
and then its subsequent um, progeny or daughter radionuclide of radon. Now it is indeed the radon that it is mated with the gas as it comes into New York and into our infrastructure. The radium-226 is still present in the waste stream that is being brought into our sanitary landfills in New York for disposal. And we'll be touching on the weakness in both of those areas of handling and addressing the, the um, potential exposure to radioactivity. But here again, I'll say that the tendency has been for the, um, the regulations and the DEC to avoid and use, um, use excuses and or um, exemptions and or uh, the reasoning that somebody else has that responsibility. We see that a lot as we look at the, the proposed regulations in the old system. And there's a lot of radioactivity and, and materials that are not being covered. The part of the reason why they don't get covered is because the system of definitions and the interpretation and classification of the waste stream is out of focus with today's demands. Back in the 90s, they came up with a bunch of um, in, examinations of the of the the waste stream and they they examined the gas and they came up with a bunch of understandings of the old style Ariscany sand and other formation gas that was not as deep and that was not as anywhere near as radioactive as the Marcellus and Utica shales are and so this keyed us on to the fact that the definitions are off and we need an, a definition adopted, and this should is part of the commenting that um, that we're putting forth that, that uses a definition that pins down the materials as technologically enhanced radioactive material, and we'll be touching on that during the webinar a little bit more in terms of how that definition unfolds. And that also covers uh, drill cuttings, but it's mostly covering gas and the radon in it. And so that's a very important uh, point. Um, there is no exemption for radon and other emissions that we want. Um, we don't want it to be excluded. And you'll see, uh, as we move into the presentation, you'll see where they say, well, you know, we, we want to regulate this, but not the radon's excused from, from consideration. My personal feeling is because it is such a daunting and such a difficult, difficult task for them. And um, either they're not up to it or they don't want to do it. They don't have the staff. For whatever reason, we as the public are being exposed to levels of um, radon and, and other air emissions that are unacceptable. So that's another uh, talking point or issue that we're making. And we do not believe that they should, in the middle of looking at a waste problem or uh, an exposure problem, they should not be able to arbitrarily issue variances, which also the new regulations are saying oh, well, we can, we can issue a variance. And um, there's very little control over how that would be done, apparently. Um, and the dosage limitations must provide better protection to the health of the public. And so that's, um, that's a very important point that are also included. Next slide. Proposed changes. Um, to this legislation exclude the regulation of um, huge areas of uh, exposure and that poses a uh, potential s significant environmental impact and as a result of that we're saying that the seeker review or the environmental review of these regulations and their negative declaration of significance is just wrong. 
it is it misses the mark. It reminds me of what FERC does uh, with the major projects. They they're very uh, on the surface. They 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 declare that there's going to be no problems, as though that's going to make it so, and and everything moves forward. So I have a sense that uh, as a reviewer and commenter that they have not done the proper environmental uh, impact review and we'll be stating that further in, as we go along. Proposed changes present serious concerns about our regulation of hazardous radioactive materials and they should have identified this entire process as a type 1 action that requires a full environmental impact statement. And when you look at their documentation, if you go to their pages, um, and background Fred, I, I can't hear you sometimes now. Your voice is fading. I'm sorry. Okay, I will speak up. And uh, the they uh, is that better? Is that better? Hello. It is right now. Yes, there were. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. All right. I'll. But I'll, now I'll I can't. Now I can't hear. Yeah. You're fading okay. out again. Oh, wow. That's not good. Um, I don't know why that would be happening, but I'll keep trying to keep it up, okay? I, Can you hear I'm me hearing now? you okay, Fred. I'm hearing you okay. All right. Um, so maybe it's just else? my connection. I have a slow connection. Maybe it's me. Okay. Anybody else, type us a message. Can you hear us out there? One of the uh, <laughs> type, type something in the, in the, type, in the chat box. If, you, if we're coming across all right. Um, okay, so we the whole process should have been identified as a type one action that requires an environmental impact statement. Next slide. Now, DEC has stated in their materials that when reviewing amendments to the part 380, Please note the following are not regulated, and this was an addition to the overall uh, narrative that came after we um, after we were halfway into it and had gotten an extension. They had gotten a few comments and they added this, and it says radon is n is a naturally occurring radioactive material or norm that exists as a gas, and it is not regulated since it naturally occurs in the environment. Part 380 regulates technologically enhanced naturally occurring radioactive materials, or 10 norm, but not norm. Now, there's where the definition needs to be improved and the classification of the waste needs to be improved. And now, um, are you hearing me okay now? Yeah, I can hear you okay, and some people, a uh, handful of people wrote they can hear you okay as well. Okay, good, good. So, now, the uh, Part 380 um, needs to clear up and be very clear about the definitions and the classification of this waste. But th their hesitancy, their hesitancy to actually come across with an adoption of the EPA definition, and and their hesitancy to really declare that it is 10 norm and needs to be regulated is a theme that is throughout and we'll see more of this. The drill cuttings, and we have argued this point for years, that um, the drill cuttings from, uh, from hydrofracking are 10 norm. And we'll be prepared to have a little more discussion about that as we go further into this. And that is the key to the whole thing. They're mischaracterizing the seriousness and the levels of radioactivity and the fact that it is indeed enhanced, and it is indeed, um, it should be regulated. Next slide. And now, in order to comply with the federal law, and we are an agreement state that um, takes care of this responsibility on behalf of the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and in order to do that, um, the, the, the radon and the drill cuttings should be regulated by our program, but they are not, and they have not been. And so we're, we're seeing a, a, um, 
a spot where they're not meeting their um, responsibilities under the Atomic Energy Act or uh, as declared in the authorization by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to regulate this. So we're going to be making the point that they're not missing, they're not hitting the target and they're missing the um, the intent of the federal regulations. Now just as an aside, um, it's important to know that we as a state, if we agree to regulate discharges to the air, discharges to clean water, discharges or surface waters um, or discharges to the environment of radioactivity. We have to meet, and if we're doing that under contract basically with the feds, we have to meet their benchmarks. But it does not say we cannot go over and above. Now that's an important point um, because you'll see where they, they're saying, well, the, the feds don't necessarily say we have to do that, but that does not stop us. Um, from regulating. We can be more stringent, but we cannot be less in meeting the Federal uh, Clean Water Act, Clean Air Act, um, and the, um, the Atomic Energy Act. So um, drill cuttings are a source of radium-226, and radon is a breakdown product of that. Uh, so they qualify as a byproduct material. Remember that phrase, byproduct material. Um, because it comes up later. Next slide. DEC must not use improper definitions, we were just talking about, to exclude gas drilling wastes. And they remove the definition of norm from proposed regulations, but use an improper definition of background radiation to exclude it. So there's a word game that goes on here, and I, it's difficult for the the, the first timer or uh, to understand this. But uh, just leave it at this: it's a shell game of uh, where do you put the waste under what category, so that you can relieve yourself of responsibility to um, to regulate it. It's, it's just my um, perspective on what they're doing, and they propose to incorporate the definition of ten norm but they have put a definition in the section of regulation that leaves them a lot of wiggle room. And we're proposing that the EPA definition, which is a federal um, suggested definition, and it's one that a lot of other states use that are handling this, and Pennsylvania admits to it being 10 norm, uh, West Virginia admits to it being 10 norm, and they treat it accordingly, but not New York. We're still uh, saying, well, it's just naturally occurring, so we're not responsible. Nobody has to be concerned. Okay, next slide. There's an exclusion for norm, but no definition in the new regulations. And it says in that section cited, this part does not apply to persons who dispose of or release the following radioactive materials. And under three, naturally occurring radioactive material with atomic numbers less than 92 in any form and in natural isotopic abundance. So anything with an atomic number less than 92 knocks out radium and uh, everything uh, below that except for above 92 is all of your transuranics and those are enriched um, radioactive materials that are used in your target um, devices at hospitals to make x-rays that are used in, um, in, in a lot of the uh, research and, and enhanced enriched used in weapons etc. So that is a huge block of very dangerous uh, radioisotopes below 92 that they have excused themselves and calling it naturally occurring radioactive material. Uh, but it's extremely dangerous still, um, as we know from having radon in our homes. And uh, that means that the, uh, the radium that killed Marie Curie um, and, and the byproducts that killed um, her staffers that were painting watch, um, 
watch hands um, would not be regulated. Next slide. Here's the definition that EPA says should be used for 10 norm. It's a naturally occurring radioactive material that has been concentrated or exposed to the accessible environment as a result of human activities such as manufacturing, mineral extraction, or water processing with technologically enhanced meaning that the radiological, physical, and chemical properties of the radioactive material have been concentrated or further altered by having been processed or beneficiated or disturbed in a way that increases the potential for human and or environmental exposures. Now this is what we are stating we want them to adopt as a definition of 10 norm. And the, the strict application of that will bring the waste stream, many of the waste streams that are being um, classified away or ignored, and the gas uh, levels of radon in the natural gas and the waste streams that are generated during transmission of the natural gas. It'll bring all of those into regulation and subject to analysis, permitting, environmental impact evaluation. This is extremely important that we get the classification of these wastes and, and, and the radioactive activity correct so that, um, so that it is not dismissed and we're not exposed to it, or at least there is analysis and mitigative measures taken. Next slide. The DEC proposed definition is here, and that says technologically enhanced naturally occurring radioactive material, or 10 norm, means naturally occurring radioactive material whose radionuclide concentrations are increased by or as a result of past or present human practices. Now, on the surface, you'd say, well, that, that kind of pins it down, but when you read between the lines there, the, um, the concentrations are increased. That leaves a lot of room for uh, interpretation as to whether or not the materials have been processed and increased the concentrations or as a result of past or present human practices. So it all is depending on have you increased the amount of radium in the column or, or the amount of radon that's in the gas? Has it been increased? Now, we, in our research, um, have uncovered reasons why the process of hydrofracking and releasing it from its mild deep um, entombment and the process of compressing it to 1200 PSI and putting it in a pipe and the fact that the daughter radionuclides come out of suspension in the gas and they crust on the internals of the pipe and they make a scale that builds up in radioactivity. So we have three or four really, really dynamic arguments that we'll be presenting and we're going to be prepared to argue all the way to an Article 78 if it takes it to, to make DEC give us a proper um, definition for 10 norm and also to make DEC um, take care of their responsibilities under Part 380. Next slide. Their definition of background radiation is insufficient. Now, background radiation is important um, because you're limited in terms of the amount of increase in radiation that a person should be exposed to. Now, this is a rather confusing uh, section of uh, definitions that needs to be really uh, dissected and looked at very carefully. Now, they're saying here down towards the bottom, background radiation does not include that radiation from 
licensed material, meaning like your um, the material that you're using in a lab or in a hospital, um, source or byproduct. And they're saying that um, Norm and some of the drilling and the radon is a byproduct. So here they're saying it does not include byproduct. And woven into this, I see a weakness and or a way out. You, there's a dozen ways out that they've woven into the wording here so that they don't have to belly up to a very serious situation, in my opinion. Next slide. Okay, and it's improper to remove an exemption for byproduct material from the definition of background. And um, we're going to leave it at that. It's a, it's a, it's a very intricate argument that uh, we'll be waging. Um, next slide. Now, we're, we're very appreciative to um, the Citizens Environmental Coalition that has prepared a very, very in-depth, and they have experts and doctors and, and, and radiological experts, and they have looked at the dosage limits and they've provided a lot of this information. And uh, Concerned Citizens of Allegheny County has signed on to this, as has many other groups. And um, the dosage limits of two millirems per hour in unrestricted areas are unacceptable. I can't defend that statement because I am uh, not really that up on the, but I'm going to trust that their doctors and their experts are um, definitely well voiced in that. So suffice it to say that title, the dosage limits that they're allowing us to be exposed to must be reduced. An example of that is the EPA recently uh, increased the amount of radioactivity that's allowed in drinking water standards. And it was by many orders of magnitude over what um, previously was allowed. And that's because the atmospheric de deposition and the world has changed to the point that there's more of it in the water, but they just increased the level. <laughs> with very little discussion about it. This is a similar thing. Women and going down to the bottom um, or in the middle here, um, the dosage limit for the public of 10 millirems in air emissions and 100 millirems in water effluents are unacceptable. Improper to exclude contribution from leases to sanitary sewers. Okay, um, so they're saying if you dump it down the sewer, then um, that's excluded from consideration as exposure to the public because it's in the sewer and it's not in your tap water. That's unacceptable. Dosage limits must reflect greater sensitivity uh, for women, children, and developing fetuses to radiation. Women should have an additional safety factor of 10 fetuses and children should have an additional safety factor of 100. Now these are professionals that are suggesting this. And so, um, and, and, and then there is very little in Part 380, if anything, about occupational exposure. Next slide. So the dose limits on airborne emissions, and here's an example of where they bring out this, um, this standard that it's what we should be trying to attain for airborne emissions of radioactivity and ALARA ALARA is a standard meaning as low as reasonably achievable <laughs> and and we run into that in a lot of regulations ALARA but here let's read this okay to implement as low as reasonably achievable requirements and notwithstanding the requirements in this section, a constraint on airborne emissions of radioactive material to the environment is in place, but it excludes radon-222 and its decay products, which would be um, radon and, and, and in the gas. And so there you have it right there. They're excluding radon-222 again. Okay. Um, we object to that strenuously. Next slide. 
Now here's an interesting slide that um, was a, a part of a study done by the Damascus um, Citizens for Sustainability. And they're out of New York City area, and they provided this uh, report. And this is one of the slides that shows the escape of methane from a compressor station. And these peaks um, are actually the spikes in this, um, this fallout of methane that uh, occurs as a result of the operation of this compressor station. And at right downwind immediately from the, the it goes to 22,300 parts per billion of, um, uh, of methane. Now, and then it did varying levels as it washed down the valley. Um, and this is the apparent plume of escaping methane. Now that methane is indeed carrying radon and the progeny of radon, which is polonium-210 as it breaks down, and then lead-210. And polonium has a um, 100-day um, period of uh, half-life and and then the lead 210 is radioactive half-life of 22 years 22 years and so during the life of this um, uh, compressor station this is going to be a constant uh, output through their stacks and it, it's it's worth mentioning that Radon is a, a noble gas. It is inert. It does not burn. So as it comes into New York in just a matter of 12 or 16 hours, it is at this uh, the compressor stations that we they are trying to build here. It's it's going through their generating facilities and and their generators and through their stacks, and constantly being a source of fallout on the neighborhoods and on the neighbors, downwinders, et cetera. And it's also constantly being um, deposited on the internals of their motors and their, and, and their valves, et cetera. So th this is something that needs to be regulated. It needs to at least be identified and studied and th the realities of the levels that people are being exposed to need to be brought out. You'll see in many of our canned letters, um, radon is the number two cause of lung cancer in the United States. And this is an accepted um, fact by the scientific community. And um, this is, um, and, and that's among smokers. That, 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 that's a, a, an alarming number. And they project 21,000 people nationwide die from exposure to radon, mostly in their houses. And, um, and, and some occupational hazard, but the bottom line is that it is a killer and it can be dangerous, radon. And this is the plume, <laughs> the levels of um, methane carrying radon. Just as a factoid, radon is also heavier than air. So it tends to um, hang into the lower lying areas and, and stay there. And in the end, it turns into lead. And we know that lead is also a uh, neurotoxin and, and extremely dangerous uh, uh, pollutant. Next slide. So we want to remove the as low as reasonably achievable uh, loophole. And that means that they're making every reasonable effort to maintain exposures as far below the dose limit as is practical, um, but they talk about, as you see down at the bottom, the economics of improvements in relation to the state of technology, the economics of improvements in relation to benefits to the public health and safety and other societal and socioeconomic considerations and in relation to utilization of radioactive materials in the public interest. So that there is a very loose-ended um, area where they can say, well, we're doing the best we reasonably can achieve. 
and that's it. And we're not going to regulate it because you need your gas, and and those people that get exposed to radon are just um, collateral damage. We we can't accept that. Um, I don't accept that, and I, I don't think that um, anyone else that is subject and or any one of those 21,000 people that die from radon exposure would not accept the public benefit, public interest. Next slide. We want them to remove the exemptions and the variances seriously uh, that seriously undermine the regulatory plan for protecting the public from low-level radioactive materials. That's that's the the heart of what we're talking about here. We're we're we want them to remove the, the, the air emissions that are allowed and under exemption. When you look at the Title V uh, air quality um, permits and, and uh, for these compressor stations and, and, um, and the discharges that are allowed, they don't even look at radioactivity at all. There's no testing for it. There's no. Um, it, there was a special study done by DEC in the 90s, and they they said, okay, well, it doesn't look that bad, and that's it. But since then, we're using and and we're discharging a lot more from the Marcellus Formation. So, okay, next slide. They should not be allowing the disposal of wastes and uh, by variants. And that is um, a way of getting around a detailed examination of the impact to the environment. And it would allow for the disposal of um, the widespread distribution of uh, the waste across New York State. OK, next slide. And we have um, definitive links to reports and research and data that um, you can hit on these and go and find some really, really brilliant treatise on the issues and um, warnings and, and data. And um, this compendium that was put out by Concerned Health Professionals of New York is brilliant. And it's all peer-reviewed uh, reports. Uh, some of the sites, there's, there's hundreds of um, citations of reports. Some of the sites, the links have expired, but you just have to type in the name and you'll find the reports. Um, the radon content of natural gas samples was done by USGS, and that is the link to the USGS site that has that information. And that's where they actually give you the picocuries per leader that you're going to be um, uh, anticipating is in the gas. And they went right to the wellheads and they measured it. Summary of con compressor stations and health impacts um, done by the Southwest Pennsylvania Environmental Health Project, a brilliant bunch of activists down there that are serious about the health um, impacts in in um, in Pennsylvania, and that's their treatise, a very, very good piece. And then the E42 Task Force, um, which is a review of 10 norm in the oil and gas industry. It, it, it's a general consensus everywhere except for New York State DEC um, that um, the, the oil and gas uh, industry is handling 10 norm, technologically enhanced materials um, and so and we're going to prove that point and in this submission and, uh, and whatever we have to do to make uh, DEC concede to that. Next slide. Now we have done um, um, oh, eight or nine uh, comment letters that you'll find at this site, at this link, and they were prepared by myself and Dennis Higgins and Trellon Smith, and I just have to give them a, a, a big shout out and a thank you. And we got together and we decided that the general public needed some canned public, um, some canned um, uh, public comment basis, and so you'll find those there. And they're pre-written letters, but you can add a few sentences to them, and you can um, make them your own. 
and you know take the gist out of them. They should be you should be able to get them into a word format and then sign them and either post them on the email to the DEC or uh, put them in the US mail. So that's one thing that we've done and thank you uh, very much to Dennis Higgins and Trellin Smith. And uh, the talking points also are an, at the Damascus Citizens for Sustainability site and they're a, just a very active and brilliant group of folks down in the downstate in New York uh, City and they have um, really done a lot of work with the exposure of the residents to radon and if you really want to see that story get their talking points um, or their their fact sheet and um, take a look at it. it it's very credible and uh, they've done a marvelous job with that and uh, they're still fighting the battle of getting their voices heard in the the New York City um, administration. Next slide. This is an example of one of our um, uh, sample letters and this is the one where we um, we state at the bottom um, well, in the body of it, we talk about the decay products of polonium-210. And we have a couple of minutes. I'll point out that polonium, which is a daughter and a result of the decay of radon in your gas, is the poison that was used to kill um, a, um, a Russian um, recently. Let's see, I wrote his name down here somewhere. But um, it's a high, high, highly poison and extremely radioactive um, material. And um, down at the bottom, the EPA definition is accepted for characterization and determination of 10 norm. No lesser de definition should be adopted by New York State. It's therefore, recommended DEC adopt the EPA definition for 10 norm. And uh, it's been our position that getting the classification and getting the work done on figuring out what this waste really is and where it belongs in, and, and coming up with a regulatory um, scenario that fits today, not back in the 80s and 90s, um, is, is what we need to accomplish. Next slide. Comments are due July 5th. Now we've uh, gotten an extension and uh, we've uh, been working on our comments as agencies and as um, uh, groups and activist groups and individuals. And um, we decided that this webinar would be handy and if you get the hold of the um, canned letters, you'll be able to put something together or on your own, just look at the materials and speak from your heart and, and let DEC know the importance of, of, this, uh, of this effort. Next slide. If you would like to join us in a continued conversation of this, um, there is the number, 641-715-3610 with an access code 160112. And um, pound signed after that, and we will be there. Uh, I assume, Erin, right? We'll be um, dialing that up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll be dialing yeah. that up. If if people want to ask questions, I see that um, we did not have any uh, questions, or maybe you do have questions. Erin, um, have you picked up any questions? <clears throat> there was one question that somebody asked um, about, um, where did that go? So isn't all radioactive material natural when found underground? Natural, yes, but when you send a drill bit down into it, and you grind it up and you mix it with um, other chemicals and you turn it into a slurry and, and draw it out of there. And then when you release the gas that's locked into its tomb a mile underground and you release it, it generates 
progeny at different rates and when you compress it to 1200 PSI after it comes out of the ground at around 500 now yes it was at more when it was a mile deep but when you put it through these changes it indeed and and you bring it up to the surface it exposes us whereas it wasn't before there are outcroppings of the Marcellus shale and up near Syracuse near Mar Marcellus New York and that's how it got its name but that is um, different than turning it into a gas and putting it in a pipe and compressing it and putting it through your stove um, so that's just um, and we, th we think the proper definition of naturally occurring is a definition that DEC proposed in 2008 that has not been adopted by them in these new uh, proposals, but that definition is, uh, is a material that it's in its natural state in the ground and undisturbed. And uh, that, that would be a proper definition of naturally occurring. Uh, would you like to wrap up, Rachel? Well, I think you've done and given an excellent presentation, Fred, and I, I really don't have anything to add except to say, like uh, as you already said, that we're happy to answer questions and uh, discuss these issues further on the conference call. Okay, so we'll go to that, and we've there was a lot in an hour, or or less than an hour, and we've got it done, and we have to free up the um, the website for another um, webinar. So, um, with that, I will I will thank um, thank you, Aaron, so much for the idea of putting this together, and and um, all the work you did on it, and Rachel, as always, it's been a a, a pleasure and a privilege to work with you, and um, and the Sierra Club. And uh, I hope that the um, 18 or, or I think it was up to 21 at one point people that have listened in have benefited and that you uh, are able to write some comments. So thank you. And Erin, uh, you want to wrap it up? Yeah. So um, if you um, if you're interested in continuing the conversation, like Fred said, just dial this phone number. And then when you're prompted, you enter the access code. And um, make sure that if you want to refer to the uh, PowerPoint, you can download the PDF version under Handouts on the, the menu on the right-hand side. And uh, don't forget those other two handouts as well. So we'll, we'll transition over to the conference call now, and you can uh, look at the PDF on your computer, and we'll continue the conversation. So thanks so we, much, Fred, for You're welcome. And we did the, record this, and I guess we'll get the word out as to how you can access that um, through, through our channels, okay? Yeah, uh, so this is my first time trying the recording feature on this, so hopefully everything worked well, and we'll have a good, um, a good recording to be able to share with people that weren't able to make it tonight. All right, thank you so much. Okay, everybody, we'll see you on the on the other line. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.